Oh, yeah. About a month away from the playoffs, the rest of the high school football season. It's probably going to feel a little much, a little bit like a playoff atmosphere as teams from our area try to get into the big dance. So welcome to Football Friday. Shane right here along with Yanni Crockett as we kick off week eight with some key district matchups tonight, Yanni. The district champion gets to host at least their first playoff game. So a lot at stake in these district battles when it comes to the postseason and the FHSA power rankings. And our game of the week featuring two 5-1 teams in 3M District 9, number 5 Atlantic at Seminole Ridge, neck and neck with each other, with Dwyer the only other team in the district at 2-5 so far this year. All right, to Loxahatchee we go. Seminole Ridge giving up just four points a game this season. Opening drive for Atlantic Hawks, showing that defensive toughness. Ty Jackson in the pile, just rips the football free. And check it out, he's heading the other way. The all-county linebacker will take that for a defensive touchdown. 7-0 Seminole Ridge. Next drive for the Eagles. Demarion Alberic on the carry. Marquand Griffith strips him with a football. Two Atlantic drives, two forced fumbles from the Hawks, but only a matter of time before the Eagles will clean that up. Lincoln Graff spins into the end zone to tie the game at seven. Late second quarter, Atlantic has a fourth and goal. Graff looking, buying some time. Finally, Mark Hannaford wide open there in the end zone, hauls in the touchdown. Eagles take the lead. Ensuing Seminole Ridge drive, Dylan Reed rolling to his right, intercepted by Josiah Haynes. And they're heading the other way. Atlantic cashes in on the score right before the half. Graff hits Jadarius Patterson. Graff with three touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. Atlantic wins 43-13, improving to 6-1 and one on the year. Number six, Santa Lucia is looking for their third straight win, and hoping to snap Boca's three-game win streak. No score in the first. The Chiefs' first drive of the game, Shai DeVoe makes a beautiful pass to Israel Marion. A gain of 20-plus yards down the field, and the Chiefs' first down. They're in business. On the next play, DeVoe hands off to running back Derek Williams for some nice yardage and then on the next play after that they go right back to Williams and he's got the first touchdown of the game. Chiefs take a 7-0 lead. Some hard running there. Ensuing bulk of possession. Bobcats quarterback Chance Rustin on the shovel pass here to Ryan Platten making it first and goal. He's knocked out inside the one from there. Rustin keeps it and scores it reaching over the defense to tie the game at seven. Chiefs quarterback Shai DeVoe knocked out of this game, taken to the hospital with an apparent knee injury. We hope he's okay. Boca would upset Santa Luces with DeVoe mm. out 24-21. Big win there. 2M District 10 matchup American Heritage. Delray visiting Somerset Canyon's late first half. Canyon's up 14-0. Stallion Sean Siska finds Peyton Sertan for the first down down the far sideline. Next play, Siska to Darren Presley. Presley evades a defender and he takes it down the sideline. Look at him go before he gets knocked out of bounds right in front of our cameraman. Later in the drive, Jaden Desir getting the Stallions first TD of the game. Cuts the deficit to 14-7 with a few minutes remaining in the first half. Back come the Cougars. Look at the play call. Jaden Harrington to Dorian Darby. Double pass. Tegan Brisky on the receiving end. What a play call. Somerset wins 35-14. All right, now to a team that's played possibly the toughest schedule in our area, at least. Pahokee playing at number two, Benjamin. Yeah, the Blue Devils playing their fourth team on our Football Friday top ten list after games against Santa Lucia, Palm Beach Central, Atlantic, and now tonight, Benjamin. Yeah, tough schedule for them. The Bucks coming off their first loss of the season at Palm Beach Central last week. So they were hungry tonight. Already up 7-0. Chauncey Bonds says, feed me some more. Takes the handoff, breaks the tackle, mm. and the... Georgia commit finds the end zone for the second time to put the Bucks out to a 14-0 lead. Pahokee trying to respond. Samuel Arlen Arnold has the handoff, Ooh. but he's stripped by Gage Wallace. Gerard Atwater would jump on the fumble and gives the Benjamin offense back the ball. In swing possession, Jaden Vega and the D1 offer from Charlotte slings it deep down the field to another D1 prospect. Amari Williams, he got an offer from Georgia this week. So makes a tough catch, shaking up, but He'd be all right. The Bucks would go right back to Bowens on the ground. His third touchdown of the night. Bucks bounce back and beat Pahokee 35 to zero. Wow, impressive score. Oxbridge Academy looking for back-to-back -back wins, hosting Somerset Key at a Deerfield Beach. Thunder rolls up 22 in the second half, trying to add to it. DeBoren Burrows on the carry, big hole, breaks some tackles, and 
Gains some big yardage for Oxbridge later in the drive. Dorian Fontelroy airs it out. Admire St. John. What a catch. Wow. What a false start. So that touchdown doesn't count. Come on, ref. Nice catch, though. <laughs> Oxbridge turns it over on downs inside the five. So Somerset driving now. Grant Tidwell to Shavar Lampkin, and he goes the distance, avoiding the Lion defenders. Thunderbolt defenders, Lions touchdown. Oxford's a little sloppy with that football on another would-be touchdown as this fumbles through the back of the end zone. But they built enough of a cushion and they add to it in the 42-12 Oxbridge victory. After the break, still more to come on Football Friday. We head to the Treasure Coast as Centennial tries to upset Vera Beach. Plus, our play of the week when Football Friday returns. Since losing to Seminole in late September, number three Vera Beach has been on a tear, outscoring their last opponents 85 mm. to 6. Their last two opponents, two games, 85 points. It's pretty wow. big. The Eagles winless so far this season. Centennial, they've scored in double digits just twice this year. Yeah, for us, District 12 battle. It was an uphill battle for Centennial tonight on the road. Opening drive for Vero, Jonathan Hillsman takes Whoop. a short pitch here. Watch the speed to the outside and then watch the balance to stay in bounds. Tiptoes up the sideline, 29 yard touchdown run. Vero leads seven nothing. Hillsman was just getting warmed up. Later in the first, Tyler Erickson, quick pass to Hillsman, has a few blocks and walks in for the easy touchdown. Vero out to a quick 14 to zero lead. Still in the first, Centennial looking to move the ball, but Alec Sertzmo's pass picked off by Xavier Tutu Griffin. Already had a receiving touchdown in the first quarter. Now the Western Kentucky commit has a pick six as he returns it for the score. Indians win it big, 44 to zero. Wow. All right, our player of the week comes from Somerset Academy, Jaden Harrington to Darian Darby. It's a double pass. You don't see this too much in high school. Freeing up Tegan Brisky. What a play call. Gotta love the trickeration there. Cougars win it 35 to 14. All right, let's check that scoreboard. West Boca coming up short at Coconut Creek, a top 15 team in the state, 42-28.
After giving up 74 last week to Kings Academy, St. John Paul II gives up 70 to Cardinal Newman. Crusaders roll 70 to 6. Garcia comes up short on the road at Aubrey Rogers, 16-8. Tenth-ranked Treasure Coast taking care of Fort Pierce Central, 34-21. A long night for John Carroll, losing to Cardinal Moody on the road, 49-6. About Okeechobee snapping a three-game losing streak, beating Port St. Lucie on the Treasure Coast 34-7. Jupiter Christian, impressive season, 6-1 now after beating Avant Garde 40-14 on the road. Olympic Heights falls on the road, though, to Coral Springs 36-24. Fort Pierce Westwood falling at Sebring, a long trip home with a loss 30-3. And Willwood storms back to beat Spanish River. The Sharks having a good year. They fall 38 to 34. And Cluiston picks up a home district win over Lake Placid, 44 to 22. All right, another busy weekend of college football starting tomorrow at noon with number four Florida State hosting Syracuse. At 3.30, Oregon travels to Washington. And to wrap things up at 7.30, top 25 matchup as Miami. Uh, did you see that finish last week, Shane? Man, terrible. Tries to bounce back to last week's loss at number 12, North Carolina. And this week's community champion being recognized for his selfless work beyond the game. Vero Beach security officer and assistant coach Teddy Floyd alongside our own Mike Lyons and the Indian football team. Teddy given a commemorative ball by Superintendent David Moore. He's been a coach at Vero for over 20 years and served Indian River County for 31 years as Sheriff's Deputy. He's also involved with over a dozen community outreach programs. All right, from last night, number one Palm Beach Central keeps the momentum from that thrilling Benjamin win at home against Wellington um, last night against uh, Forest Hill, that is, last night. The off, uh, offense humming here in the opening drive. Caleb Butler over the middle to Wade Charles, a four-star Miami commit, goes untouched into the end zone. Easy 42-yard touchdown. It's 7-0 Central, and Forest Hill not going to roll over and die. They march down the field. Quarterback Josh Hurst spins into the end zone. It's a 7-6 game, but too much from the Broncos offense. The quad right. Vice lame is right. So fast and so shifty, the big game, the drive capped off when Caleb Butler hits Preston Parker, jukes some defenders and muscles his way into the end zone. Broncos remain undefeated, winning 48 to 12. Definitely some changes in our top 10 mm. list. Santa Lucia's going down and a couple teams with some good wins, so we'll see. Yeah, big win for Benjamin, big win for Atlantic as well. Big game next week, Benjamin and Cardinal Newman. We'll see you next week in Football Friday.